All right, kids, thanks for being here very, very much. Danny D'Angelo, the self-proclaimed king of laundry, and that makes the rest of you my loyal subject, I, I, I guess. I don't know. These uh, webinars I really enjoy because this is about you. Uh, many of you here have seen my course. Many of you have known me for years. Some, uh, we are not preaching to said choir. Some of you just know me from YouTube, perhaps. And I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time today. That said, uh, I always go into these things, fly by the seat of my pants, uh, don't really have any script. I do not enjoy nets. Uh, I have been extremely successful in laundromats. I bought my first store 100 years ago for $250,000. Instantaneously, I realized I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, I had been very successful. Now, at 51 years old, I look back and I've had a lot of big successes in my life. Honestly, a lot of that were ballsy moves that I made. I've been on a real estate ladder south of the border in Mexico, for instance, since I was 28 years old. And a lot of folks don't even know how that works. They're extremely fearful buying land in another country. And so big risk, big reward. But whatever other career you've got, job stands for just over broke, you're working in that segment and putting money into something, be it stocks, bonds, under your mattress, gold, silver, Rolex watches, whatever you're into. But I, I've, I've started really drilling down on this recently. The poor spend money. They always will. The middle class saves money. And the affluent, the rich, invest money. I can't tell you how I got here, but I can say there were always forks in the road. And I've always thrown those dice and made big moves. Uh, life is good. With the laundromat thing, I had this store and I didn't know what I was doing. And there really wasn't anyone out there to tell me. There were distributors, there was the industry itself, there still is the Coin Laundry Association. There are Facebook groups now that didn't exist then, but I was this guy that thought, I'm, I'm the master of the universe, I'm gonna do this right, I'm gonna do it well, went out and bought a laundromat. Then I started to see the veneer crack and peel away. A lot of, for instances, when I went into the store, there were two employees who were being paid under the table. They were sitting in the back room watching a television with their feet up. I just saw red. I knew I had to fix that. Today, I have hundreds of people all over the world in their stores using contract attendance. If you've got 40 stores, we've got a guest on board that is taking his valuable time to be here and a friend. If you scale and you have several laundromats, you're in a different boat. Predominantly what I teach and preach is how to get into the industry carefully and properly. The other thing about that first store that I owned, I had a key ring as big as my head. My head's pretty big. I walked around the store trying to get those locks open so I could get to the coins and my fingers were literally bleeding. Now, I remember that turning point. We all have those moments in our lives. And I remember thinking, what am I doing? I'm the son of a locksmith, and I can't get these locks open. I didn't know which key went to what. I figured out that the ring, there was one key I needed to start with and then go through. But I thought, this is not what I signed up for. No one had taught me or mentored me how to do this. And I fixed that problem because I remember the thought process. Will I sell this store for what I paid or more? Will I get the hell out of this industry? No, being a bootstrap guy, I said, I'm going to fix this. I fired those two attendants, not knowing how I was going to man the store. I said, that's it. You're done. Out. Then I went to the distributor. I closed the doors of the store for the first time and the only time, and I bought new coin boxes. To this day, that store has three keys. 
one to the change machines, one to the washers, one to the dryers. It cost me $1,000 and I fixed the problem because that's who I am. I'm not a drawing board guy. I don't wonder as I fall asleep at night how I'm going to fix issues. I just see the problem, see the solution. doesn't always work. Now, I would obtain another store and another store and another store, realizing that I should have never paid for that store. Why is it free laundromat? There's folks on here who have done it. We'll talk to them. It's free because you refuse to pay for the business rights. When this works properly, you've got a rented business. The brick and mortar, the dirt is owned by some landlord or some entity or some real estate investment trust. If you're not into real estate, you don't think about this. Who is the landlord when you go to Walmart? If you look in the corner of the parking lot, there's a small sign that says Schwartz, Stein, and Allen. And there's a phone number. That's either the management company or the investment trust or the small family entity that owns that dirt. You don't see that at McDonald's because they own the dirt. Different story. This is a fantastic business. You've got tons of questions and I'm available for you. A lot of times I read your questionnaires when you sign up for these webinars and the common thread is folks saying, I want to talk to Danny. Well, why don't you? Just email me. I'm here to help. Other than the hobbies, other than my house in Mexico, my yacht in San Diego, my sailboat south of the border, the 107 acres I bought up near the Grand Canyon, other than competing in shooting all over the world with my now 19-year-old daughter, other than all of that, keeping you safe and doing this right has been my vocation. And I love it. I had a choice. When I sold all of my stores, I was looking at a pile of money and I didn't want to leave you. I didn't want to walk away from the industry and have newbies coming into this thinking, what do I do? How do I do this? Nobody wants to listen to me blather on and on. I'd like to introduce you to Lee Williford. And really, thanks, Lee, so much for being on board. I I'd like to say that uh, I've known your brother, Luke, for a long time through the internet, through text and phone conversations, and there's a serious bromance there. He's a phenomenal dude. And when I came to visit you, it, it was funny because I tried to get there as early in the day as I could. You guys were working on a store. And I don't know if you know this, I, I had my grubbies on. I really wanted to get down and, and help you guys work. And Luke was like, whistle blown, the work day is over, let's go to the oyster bar. So. <laughs> I was kind of like, oh, shucks, my, my plan went sideways. But having met you for the first time, I, sometimes you just meet people and you say, okay, this individual, this person, kindred spirits, uh, you're the polar opposite of your brother, and I think I love you for it. Tell us a little about you, your background, and what you know about laundromats. Hey, Danny. Thank you for having me on. This is a, a pleasure. Um, so yeah, Luke and I are, are polar opposites. I've, I've got him about four years, um, but that's just about it. And we have a lot of fun uh, running laundromats. We uh, operate quite a few here in uh, North Carolina, and we're continuing to grow. Uh, we serve a, a lot of customers. We serve about 15,000 customers a week, uh, which is pretty incredible. You know, 10 years ago, we, we didn't anticipate that at all. But uh, here we are. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve those people and to, to be on uh, your show <laughs> this, this time to, to talk to your audience. It means a lot. And I noticed you said service more than once, and that's really important. It's, it, it's funny. When I started doing this, when I was scooping up my stores for free and I was building this empire, and I was sort of bumping around in the dark and figuring out how to solve all of the problems. Attendance, should you have them? Of course, you have to. Um, automatic door locks, 
no thank you. You, know, you guys are different in a lot of ways because you're very humble, obviously, and um, you've got, what, is it 41 stores now? Yeah, so uh, Luke and I then operate 32. We've got uh, brothers-in-law who have 11, and then other family members who have about 35 between them. So we've, that, we've got a lot of locations out there. By my math, that's like 800 stores. <laughs> it feels like it sometimes. <laughs> Astounding, but is it third generation? Yeah, we are. Uh, we are third generation. Our, our grandfather uh, got into business uh, in the 1960s, and uh, it's been all about serving people ever since. My great grandfather had a dry cleaning outfit in Brooklyn, New York. I just, mm -hmm. I, I didn't. It was a long time ago, and I just found out a couple years ago that that even happened. My my grandmother, before she passed away, said, you know, your, your great-grandfather had a, had a laundromat in Brooklyn. I was like, a laundromat? No way. I was astounded. She's like, no, no, that's, that's right. It's a dry cleaner. I'm like, well, Grandma, that's a little different. Um, but I guess it, it, it's in your blood. So yeah, you, it's in your blood. That's right. You're, again, you're so humble. And, and now you and Luke have started the Williford Brothers. You're, uh, you're doing the YouTube thing. What's the goal there? What's, what's the goal with your YouTube channel? Yeah, so we uh, started uh, the Williford Brothers. Um, like, follow, subscribe. <laughs> and the, the, catalyst, <laughs> the catalyst behind it is um, empowering uh, laundromat owners and operators uh, to be the best that they can be. Um, there are a lot of people out there who uh, circle potential uh, investors, owners, um, existing store operators, who are almost like sharks and they smell blood. And so they are out there with some self-interest to try and make as much money uh, off of you as they can without adding any value. And so uh, we recognize that. And with our experience, we just want to turn that into an opportunity to empower store owners and operators uh, so that they can avoid paying what we call the stupid tax. You know, you, you, you spent... $200,000 more than you should have on a purchase. You spent way too much over equipping your store because your distributor said you needed so much equipment when it turns out you really didn't. Um, so yeah. you're, you're, off, you're, off, you're off to the races about a mile behind the starting line. So we really want to empower folks who are looking into getting into this industry and uh, people who are in it who want to grow and scale their business operations. Well, leave the newbies to me, and we'll get along fine. Yeah, uh, yeah it's yeah, fun. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because it was not funny, not ironic. It, it, it's really impactful that when we met, the conversation with, you know, beers flowing and oysters on the way, uh, and, of course, Luke said, I'm only going to have one drink, and... He had a Long Island iced tea. I'll never forget that because that's literally 18 shots of whiskey, uh, every every clear liquor that exists. But it was it was phenomenal because the conversation. And I think this happens too at the Coin Laundry Association. Uh, it happens at the clean shows where everybody goes into a quiet pocket and they start talking about how they were raped and robbed when they started. Uh, it. How, how is it still happening? How is it even possible? And what we're talking about here, guys, and, and Daniel can attest to this, um, when you get into the business, you're, you're looking for the corporate speak, and you're looking for information, and when you find it, it's the industry side. It says on my website, and it has been there for years, that I'm the most hated man in the industry, and that's by the industry. And I don't know if you know this, Lee, I, when I first started, I thought, well, I'm going to become this laundromat guru. This is 16 years ago. You know, YouTube was brand new. And I made a video walking around, talking to myself with a script, the stuff that I didn't know I needed to get rid of, the, you know, just be yourself, just bullshit at the camera. And back then, I didn't know if any of this would work. I didn't know if anybody wanted to hear what I had to say. But right away, I, I reached out to the CLA and I paid them a couple hundred dollars for banner ads, you know, little pop-up ads on their website. And then the next day I got an email 
we've refunded your money. And I was upset. I, I, I called and I got through to the president and Hail to the Chief was playing. And he explained that we were in competition with one another. And I, I said, what? Now they had purchased, at the time I had a DVD and they had bought it and they had watched it. I didn't know that. They used some backdoor email. But then in there, you're, the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you're like, why am I in competition with the whole industry? What does this mean? They don't really want the curtain pulled back. Um, the typical laundromat operator will buy a store. Correct me and inter interrupt me if I'm wrong, Lee. They'll buy mm -hmm. a store. They'll own one store. Once they spend the money, they'll realize, what have I done? And I think it goes back to these potential operators being in their early to late 50s. They've worked an entire life. They've put money away. Again, they've saved. They're somewhere between the poor and the wealthy. They're in the middle and they've saved some money and they say, I've got a hole burning in my pocket. I've got dozens of students who have stores who first reached out to me because their gram gram passed and left them some money. And uh -huh. smart, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. smartly, they didn't want to go to the craps table in Vegas, which is another story. They didn't want to just put it into something safe, but they wanted to own a business and they wanted to have that entrepreneurial spirit. Many of us can't spell that word. And these folks run out and buy a laundromat. I have, I take such umbrage with that word. Now, you're different, and I know that in many ways. The card reader systems that you've put into place, it makes sense when you have as many stores. You're still in a cash business. You're still in a, people walk in with cash and dirty clothes, and they leave with clean clothes and hopefully no cash. So. Again, it's different. We're not butting heads on any of that. <clears throat> these, these newbies take their money and spend it, and then they're like I was, and they say, what did I do? I have far, the last email I answered was this morning where someone says, I bought a laundromat, and something just didn't feel right. So I started looking. I found you on YouTube. It's, it's always the same. And I wanted to reach out because now I'm after more stores. I want a dollar cost average. If I have 10 stores and nine of them were free to me, fantastic. They'll always love that first store because it's a thorn in their side. There are nuances to all of this. And a lot of folks say, well, this store is for sale for only 50,000 and you can't build it for that. But I say, look, you're in LA or New York or Nebraska. If there's 20 stores in town or 300 in the city, Scout them, look at them closely. You've got your fingers on the pulse. I remember you telling me, you know all the operators, good, bad, or indifferent. And it's phenomenal that there's still these horrible, nasty, fil filthy, ripe for takeover stores everywhere. That wasn't really a question. Uh, they're, they're, yes, they're out there. I have, I have questions for you, but this, again, is an audio conference. And what I yeah. want to do is, Open the phones. Uh, we will we'll get to Daniel and any of the presenters that have come on. I don't even know about it, so your brother might pop on and feel free to say words. How do I say your first name, my my friend? Keelan, K E I L O N. Keelan. Just call me KJ. Yes, sir. You can call me KJ for sure. I will call you KJ. What is that phone ringing? Are you at the job? Oh uh, no, sir. I'm at the house. It's just the house phone ringing. <laughs> Where are you calling in from? Oh, Make sure you have a health code. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> you're you're the one. You're still paying AT and T. Where are that you calling in? Oh, Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, I love the accent. Do you have uh, you seen Have you seen my course? Uh, yes, sir. I actually ordered it uh, online, and uh, I was looking at the course on the laptop. I got to finish it, and um, I still have the DVD. Haven't tuned in yet, so okay. I was just eager to ask a lot of questions. Um, I sent you an email of a um, a laundromat that shut down. Okay. So I wanted to ask you uh, questions: how to revive it back again? Of course. Well, tisk tisk, you haven't finished the course, and and really, thank you very much uh, for for grabbing it up. It means a lot to me. I've got uh, just looked seven hundred and forty YouTube videos. So you can sit and pour over tons of information. 
And really, you, you can call about 90% of my course through YouTube, but the 10% isn't what I'm trying to hide from anyone. And guys, I wanna say that my webinars, uh, my videos, they're, they're not salesy. I'm not here to talk you into it. Later, I'll try to call on some people that do not have it. We end up preaching to the choir a lot. So, Kay, let me ask you on this store uh, that, that you've seen that's closed down. First of all, I'm gonna caution you. People get really excited about closed stores because you've got that inkling that, okay, this could be mine really easily. But I wanna say this, the preponderance of the stores that we take over and retool, most of them are operating. And we don't take that previous or existing operator and throw them out the front plate glass window. In reality, what we do is relieve them of their headache. I'm astounded because I will call landlords through my clients on YouTube live and the landlord turns out to be the operator. You know, he's the cat who owns the building and he's, and he's working there every day. And right. part of this is really this odd catch 22. If they needed to change a transmission on their tractor, they would look on YouTube. I know they would. It, it's not a secret but yet here they are in a business every single day. And I'm not saying my way is the only way, I'm saying it's one of the rightest ways to do it. If they would have said, and I call up and I say, hey, I'm Danny D'Angelo. I'm calling on behalf of KJ Williams. We wanna take over your lease. They have to think about it, right? But why is it that they never YouTubed how to run a successful store? It, it's mind boggling to me. They could find Luke and Lee Williford, you're getting top billing today, I'm sorry. Lee and Luke Williford. It just astounds me that they don't do it. I fix my own air conditioning in my house. I have two units and I don't know what's going on. I look at the problem. It's not hard. I'm not gonna give somebody 600 bucks. I find it on YouTube. I just did that. Well, what's the that, biggest- that, that mentality is coming into our industry, Danny. I think you're, you're pointing that out. The, the age of the investor, the new entrant is, is getting lower and lower because people are listening to you because they're younger, they are discovering the avenues to gain all this information. Um, and so I, I think you were a, an early entrant into that mentality. Um, you're helping to change the amount of information, the ease of access to that information to the benefit of people who are trying to get into this industry. Um, Coming so from I, you, it's, that it's means... It's a monumental task, but it, it yeah. has slowly begun to shift. Yeah, that, that, that means a lot coming from you. And I'm, I watch the forums. I'm on all of the Facebook forums where they, you know, the, the barrier to entry is, do you have a laundromat? And you have to click all these things. And a lot of them kick me out. And then I go back and somebody says, hey, they were talking about you. And we know the forums I'm talking about. And I go back in and I'm like, hey, I can't see anything. Oh, I don't know how that happened. We know the people in common who have booted me out. Okay, uh, sorry about that, Danny. Gee whiz, and I'm back in the group again. But I don't go in there again and say, you should do this, you should do that. The only time I comment is usually to say something smarmy or funny. And that's, I think, our place as gurus. If you've got a product, if you sell something, I don't think it's your place to go on a free forum and try to scoop people up. I just, I, I don't. When you Google my name, you'll see that I'm not in those forums doing that. Uh, we're excited. These things end, end up going forever, and I like that about my, my webinars. So, KJ, uh, why didn't you email? You did email me. You email. When did you send the email? Uh, I think I sent the email like two weeks ago. And I wrote you back. You did, you did. Okay. Uh, you, See, here I am uh, rolling the dice. I'm like, Jesus, I know I wrote this guy down. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, sir, yes, yeah, sir. So I, I just got caught off guard, you know, because I stay only uh, like a mile away around the corner from the laundromat. So I was like, man, this is a good investment. And, you okay. know, doing it at the same time. So I thought that was a good combination of just, you know, learning and going, walking along with, you know, whatever you're teaching at the same time. Let me, uh, in a minute here, I'm going to introduce Daniel Albrand as well. Do you know Hot Dogging with Dan, KJ? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, man. Okay, very cool. Uh, All right, thank you, sir. No, dude, you, what, what's the, 
I'd love to answer every single question. You've got, the, you've got a lot of power on this webinar. And so what's the biggest burning question? What do you, what do you need to know now? Uh, man, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think uh, what's best for me is just to finish the course. And then uh, whenever you have another free webinar, uh, just tune in again and ask uh, different questions. No, I disagree. Um, I, I want to know right this minute. So the, first of all is the, is the infrastructure in that store. When we're after laundromats that exist, we're after gas, water, and electric. Does it exist there? Do you know? Uh, man, that's a good question because um, I know when I walked up to the, um, the laundromat, you know, like I said, it was shut down. Um, it still had some of the machines in there. The okay, dryers. that's my next question. So if the if the equipment is still there, then the infrastructure is still there. Meaning, yes, sir. No one goes in. Stop, Danny. For God's sakes, the sir makes me nervous. So, if someone pulls the equipment, we have to look very carefully at what exists. And normally, that's copper. And it's not like a shiny penny when you're seeing the copper through the glass. You know, bring a flashlight, bring your phone. Uh, what you're seeing is more like the Empire State Building. It's it's green copper. And if that's there, then everything else is. Now, if the landlord doesn't take care in making sure that place is secured, we'll have the knuckleheads come in, cut the copper. You know, it's gold, silver, and bronze, but copper's right there. The price of copper is phenomenal right now. Obviously, it's mined, you know, the, the, uh, the issue of getting anything at any point, be it a dozen eggs or copper, that's another webinar for another time. But you can end up going in and stripping a Starbucks of all the copper, and you'll have $70. Stripping a laundromat, more like $7,000. So that's gold. And it's funny because nobody looks at it or understands it because these folks that steal copper, even if it's the landlord, once the equipment is taken out is when they realize, oh, wow, there's a two-inch pipe coming in from the city side for hot and cold. It's not just like your home where there's a stub about six inches long. It's very, very serious. And once they've cut it out, we're not interested. So what I would say to you, I, I, I get the impression you're a little nervous here. And you know, finishing the course is not part of asking those questions. H-A-W-A. -A, and I know that name because it's a rare one. How do I say your first name? Hawa. And it's Ms. Hawa. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Canada, Ottawa, Ontario. I'm sorry? I'm calling from Canada, Ottawa, Ontario. No, I heard you. I'm just sorry. Okay. Joke. <laughs> Thanks. My audience. My, I should just open all the microphones so we can hear. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've received emails from you, and you were interested in having a, a consultation. And here we are, smart on you for having the power of the panel. Uh, how I also want to introduce Daniel, the hot dog and dude. And Daniel and I have, have become fast friends. Of course, there's alcohol involved. I went and visited his laundromat as well in Indianapolis. Uh, Daniel, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and a quick story on, on laundromats. You were looking to buy one. How did you find me? What's, what's the deal? Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, like I said, I've got I've got a, a my YouTube channel is Hot Dog with Dan. So you, hot dog and Dan Dan food is kind of what I what I do. But uh, I ran across an opportunity. I'm always looking. I'm, I'm kind of a, a general an entrepreneur in general. I don't stick to one one main type of business or anything like that. So uh, I've owned everything from limousine companies to automotive re automotive repair business. I, that kind of, I do anything anything and everything that makes money. So I ran across an opportunity. Uh, it was a guy, um, who, he had listed a laundromat on Facebook, it was shut down, and uh, I had never even considered looking into laundromats, but uh, it looked like a good deal to me, even at the price he was trying to sell it for. Um, so, having never been in the laundromat industry or anything like that, I was kind of sweating, searching frantically for all of all the information I could possibly find about the business and you know, I had sent you an email uh, basically begging you for your help <laughs> and 
it, it, this, without without question, you you, you responded and, and walked me through the process of taking it over, and uh, I ended up going to the landlord and uh, talked to the landlord. Landlord informed me that the guy who was trying to sell it was actually six months behind on rent, so it technically wasn't even his to sell. So I love it. Uh, landlord basically said hey you know let's let's sign up if you want it you got it let's sign a lease the next day he went and got the keys from the other guy and um, we made it happen interesting so in a nutshell this is kind of what we do and a lot of folks hey i've heard it many many times nothing's free uh that's the biggie or what you're doing is really underhanded tactics, et cetera. Who's underhanded in all this when this dude who's got rented space is trying to sell it? He's trying to do a fire sale, right? Businesses are bought and sold based, in my opinion, on profit. Nothing more, nothing less. If you've got a, a company that went out of business and you own 50,000 telephones, back to KJ, right? He's got a home phone. It's worthless. Nobody needs, you know, it's a call center. It's gone out of business. The call center made money. These analogies are minor, you know, they're hit or miss, but the call center made money because they had a thousand employees that were selling a product or several products, or they were collecting on bills. And when they closed, they're doing a fire sale. Are they going to sell the business or are they going to sell the thousand telephones and booths and chairs? You know what I mean? And that's where it gets really convoluted because folks try to sell the laundromats as an equipment sale. And if I'm, if I'm correct, uh, what you did is not end run anyone or destroy anyone. I mean, if that guy was able to scoop up, what was it? It was a small amount. What was it 20 grand if I remember? Uh, yeah, I think it was, it was like 30, I think. Okay. So the, the, the short version, he wanted $30,000 for a business not based on profits. Did he even talk at all, if you remember, about what it was earning, what it was worth, et cetera? Or, or, or let well, me... It was shut down. It wasn't even okay. open. It wasn't even open because he didn't have, he didn't have the money to fix or repair any of the uh, machines. And there were, some, there were some other things that needed fixed. The water heater, the boiler for the water heater system um, was old and, and it had broken down and needed replaced and that it's that in itself was a twenty thousand dollar fix which your you talked me through you taught me how to how to get the landlord to pay for that so um, I, I we, that's exactly what happened I we signed a lease the landlord paid the twenty thousand dollars to fix the boiler system I paid a mechanic. Uh, I think maybe two hundred dollars to come in and get all the machines up and running, and uh, opened up less than less than two weeks later. Amazing, I, you know I love hearing that story. And the guy that was trying to sell the laundromat business that he he had already lost his lease; it was already shut down. It's funny because again, it doesn't pass the smell test. There's always some weird. Well, don't talk to the landlord. You know they're trying to sell the business on. Craigslist. I love to pick on Craigslist, or they're you know they're trying to sell it on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, and they're not going through a brokerage site, obviously. But the bottom line is, uh, you can't ask somebody what they paid for their Harley. You need to look at the blue book. You know, you're trying to say, well, you put some chrome parts on it, and it's it's worth X or Y. It's worth what somebody's willing to pay. But they're trying to sell this business, and at some point, the guy probably bought the place, and. In a nutshell, again, what you did was speak to the landlord and give him precisely what he wanted, which is a long-term lease. And I I appreciate you, and it's obvious that we became fast friends. And then you you sold the laundromat, right? I did. I did. So um, even in in your program, you know, you, you... you say the first thing you have to do is go in and, and retool and and um, my thing it, for me it, it was a temporary investment it was basically just going to be a flip from day one anyway so um, I, I didn't want to go in and retool and, and drop you know the money that, that it would have cost to retool jump into that kind of loan and, and long-term commitment for something that I didn't plan on holding long term so 
I went in, I did what needed to be done to get it up and running. Um, if, if anybody, if any of you have seen any of my videos, I kind of added a touch of tech to my store to, <laughs> to kind of bring it up to the, to the, the new ages. Um, I kind of made it um, completely automated everything and, and just come on, Dan, don't be shy. Dan's the Alexa guy. So he, uh, yeah. figured out and, and I use that in my approach with landlords often. I, I will tell them when I'm making initial contact in a cold call, I'm telling a landlord, uh, really what I'm doing is, is instilling a lot of confidence, speaking eloquently, because when you make that call, that landlord despises the laundromat and they, I don't want to use the word hate, it's a harsh word, but they, they do not like their existing tenant. And when we call yeah. and we, we speak eloquently and, you know, oh, who are you with? Uh, me, myself, and I, it's my partner Dan and I looking to sign this lease because they, they think you're with some corporate entity. And if you're not Lee Williford, it, it doesn't really exist. Lee has the power to call up and say, look, silly, I got 80 laundromats and I'm going to end up owning this one come hell or high water. And you're, you're instilling that confidence. And really, when you hang up the phone, that landlord or his agent is saying, this is a good business. It really seems like uh, these folks know what they're doing. Talking eloquently about whether it should be cash or card. Speaking about how we're going to get rid of the ferns that are in there. Why are they there? Uh, getting rid of the homeless. You know, you have to touch the nerve. And when I'm looking at the notes from the thousands of laundromats that have been put in front of me, uh, they're all pretty much the same. But whatever is the worst thing about the store is that that's the nerve I'm going to press by saying, hey, you think the landlord likes having homeless people hanging out in front of the laundromat? Of course not. And that security issue is something we talk about. And you're saying, I run Alexa systems in the stores. You know that old sign, you're being watched. Smile, you're on camera. That's how yeah. the, the knuckleheads know instantly there's no camera here, or they wouldn't have put the sign up. Lee, I'm missing your interruptions. I love interruptions. Uh, I, I've got a friend here in the industry from Indiana, and uh, he heard who your other guest was, and he said, oh, that's the Alexa guy. <laughs> that, that's awesome. So Dan, you're famous. And he, glad to hear that. He, deser yeah. he deserves it. Uh, and, you know, Dan made a video about it. He, he walked away with 35K. And I think that's a pretty good day at the office. Everybody's happy. The landlord has a good operating long-term lease in place. And ironically, mm -hmm. everybody wonders, well, the guy that bought it, does he know Danny? Does he know that Dan got it for free? He knows. He might be on this conference. And he thinks that, look, I'm grabbing up a laundromat for 35 k It's a quick fire sale for Dan. Because Dan knows what we talked about when he started dealing with Dan was all over the forums just pissed off about the way that the distributors treat you. The pricing is outrageous. I, I love it. When I have a one-on-one -on -one phone consultation with folks, there's this moment in time where I ask, what does a brand new commercial top loader cost? You know who's able to answer that? No one. My record is perfect. You know this, Lee. People don't know what this commercial equipment costs, what they should be paying, and they look at a laundromat full of shiny stainless steel equipment and they think, oh, it's 300,000. That's always the price for the sale. That's where it starts. Every time. 300 grand. And they walk in, and, and this is something I started to touch on in the beginning. Those people have never stepped foot in a laundromat. Now, am I saying you have to know how to make a perfect medium rare uh, ribeye in order to be a, a restaurateur? Yeah, I am. But more importantly, you have to know how many ribeyes to order. And you have to know what a good uh, atmosphere is like. Because in any food serve, and I say that because I pick on restaurants because we've all been there. I don't care if it's Hardee's, a drive through or a sit-down, tablecloth, French-speaking waiter restaurant. We all know about restaurants. Food, service, atmosphere. Argue with me. That's the only three things we look for in restaurants, food, service, atmosphere. So we know the business. We could be a good critic, even if we can't run that business. We walk away and we say to our wife, man, that was terrible. The waiter was scary. 
the steak was overcooked. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and don't go in the bathroom. And six months later, the place is closed, and you're texting your wife, hey, honey, ha, ha, ha that place is closed down. What's my point? I'm going to bring it home for you. We would all be better food critics than laundromat critics. And these folks who've saved some money decide, I want to own a laundromat, period. And I'm a, I'm a fly speck in this industry. And it's because I'm boisterous. And it's because I curse on my YouTube channel. It's because I say, free laundromat. And it turns off X number of people, especially New Yorkers, where I'm from. Ah, there's no such thing as free. Refuse to pay for the store. So these don't folks, <laughs> these folks who are horrible critics, who don't understand the business, who have likely never stepped foot in a laundromat. I've been to a nail salon. My family goes, I'm like, I got three daughters and a wife in the house. I'll go with you. I can't think of another business that I don't frequent ever. But this is how people get into this industry. They don't know anything about laundries, and they say, oh, that's the price. What are you buying? And I'm not saying there are laundromats that haven't been bought and or sold in this country and any other that end up being profitable. I'm not saying that. But why do you want to overcome that insurmountable price tag? I have a couple on Florida that's on my main page of my website that came to me and they said, we're going to buy a laundromat for $175,000. Her husband works for a living. She's retired from a high-end shoe sales career, right? So they, I said, do you have the 175 k No, but we're going to give the seller half of that and owe them the rest. Please don't do that. Please. I already know that this laundromat is nasty, that the equipment is old. They sent me photographs, and I said, you need to start scouting all over Florida. They found another store. We got 74 cents a square foot, and they retooled it. They spent their savings on a down payment on equipment that they bought right. That doesn't really sing, does it? That's the story. That's Daniel's story. So it's free laundromat, shorthand. I'm going to call on some human people. Uh, I'd like you to, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Hawa, we, we, we have you here. You muted yourself again. All right, now with the gang's all here. And so you're in Canada. What do you do for money? What's, what, how do you make a living? Um, I just work a regular job in the food industry. Okay, don't feel bad about it. Where, where do you work? I work at like a donut shop. I'm a baker. That's awesome. Time to make the donuts. Yeah. <laughs> do you even, you, you're, you're young. How old are you? You don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm 25 years old. 25. Canadian donut maker. I'm going to find the YouTube yeah. video and time to make the donuts. So how about, you, you, got, you got the power of the panel here, and we all appreciate you. Uh, and, and I want to say that I applaud you at 25 years old, being interested in owning businesses, plural, whatever it may be. Because you can work your entire life before you know it. Three kids, a husband you kind of like, a dog, and job. And the more money you make in that job, the more things you buy. Unless you're like you and you've decided. So again, I applaud you. Invest. Thank you. Invest in your future. What's the Thank big bird? You. You, you got me on the phone. What's the biggest? And you've seen the course. Yeah. I don't Honestly, charge. I, I wrote down like a lot of notes, so I don't really have a lot of questions. What I do want to ask ask is when is the best time to look for a distributor because you said that they um give you prime locations so should i look for one now or is it just too early because they're probably expecting me to like you know get machined phenomenal question if you call every distributor in canada tomorrow morning at 9 a.m interrupt mm -hmm. me if i'm wrong lee if you call them tomorrow at nine they're going to hear the inflection in your voice they can tell you're young they're going to worm out of you how much money you have, where it's socked away, and what type of a potential buyer you are, okay? It's going to take them 20 minutes. They might invite you for coffee. They might say, hey, come to... They're, they're going to either get excited about you as a human person and see the dollar signs, or they're going to say, come to our next seminar where we teach you how to change a belt on a machine. 
So I'm not picking on any one. I don't really, frankly, know the names of these distributors. You know how you change that? You know how you no. become the person they want to deal with? Sign a lease. Now mm -hmm. imagine that dichotomy. Imagine now you're calling and you're saying, every distributor in Canada, again, you're picking up the phone. Now you've signed a lease. It's cost you nothing. If you do this on your own, if you use the tactics in the course, fantastic. If not, bring me on board. Put this on a credit card if you have to. It's not me selling. I appreciate you, and I'm saying do everything you have to every single day to become a business owner. Yeah. When I was yeah. your age, I was in the Navy, and I wish I had a bigger jump on this. The number one yeah. on YouTube right now, and Lee knows this, finance. That's the number one thing kids are looking at. God bless America. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna, you're gonna sign a great question. You're gonna sign the lease. I don't care if you put this off for a year or six or 10, have the lease in hand when you go to the distributors because it's gonna change everything. Now you're calling with the confidence. You've got a Sharpie and a piece of paper and you're saying, hi silly, I have a laundromat. Here's the address. Come and give me the best price for the equipment I need and don't dawdle. Yeah, don't use your distributor to find locations. You can learn enough through folks like Danny. Um, there's a lot of information out there on where a good location is, where an existing store is that uh, needs to be rehabbed. Um, you, you can find that all yourself. I know you're a bright young woman. Um, because if you let them find you a location, they're going to find you something that is expensive. They're going to try to help you with the, the lease stuff they're going to over equip the space uh, because they're going to oversell the total amount of equipment that you need um, and you want to get ahead of all of that um, because yeah. it will cost yeah. you, you know, not just tens of thousands of dollars but hundreds of thousands of S unnecessary upfront costs yeah, thank you like thank I'm, you lee because i i had problem. i had spaced on that part of it so we make a really good tag team thank you for for bringing that up because again mm -hmm brilliant because she did ask should i use them to find a spot i i couldn't you took the words out of my mouth i couldn't have said it any better sorry how what's up but yeah like yeah i'm definitely not using them to sign the lease like i do want to use you danny um yeah definitely i just got to figure out the money situation right now and then hopefully like in a few months or like a couple of months um we could start working together so that's my my plan i can say that you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say, and Lee can attest to this, Daniel can attest to this. You look back on the big moves you made in your life that really went well, but we always dwell on the mistakes. We dwell on the, the stumbles. We dwell on the times that we lost the love of our life. But if it wasn't for that, my I joined the Navy over my high school girlfriend. What an idiot. And, <laughs> you know, thank goodness that all ended. Um, I wouldn't have found my wife, found perfection, found somebody that's willing to put up with me. And so we stumble for a reason. All I'm trying to do, all Lee is trying to do is mitigate those failures and help you along the way. It means a lot. Uh, you're doing it right. Don't rush it. That's the problem with young folks is they try to rush everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like time is against me. Like I, I want to own several businesses before I'm 30. So that's my goal. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Uh, I appreciate you. I'm going to keep your mic open. So if you want to say words, just unmute yourself. It means okay, a lot. So John uh, Zicky. Hi, John. Say words, John. John, I see that you're unmuted. D-Z-I-K-I. John, you unmuted yourself and I have you unmuted. Ah, you're killing me. This guy's like one of my biggest YouTube fans. John, <laughs> say some words. Speak up, John. We want to hear from you. John, going once. 
So let this be a lesson to us all. If your uh, microphone is working properly on your computer or you've called in, uh, there's an 800 number, then we will be golden and we will be able to do this thing. John, I'm going to leave your mic open. It's not working, so we can't hear you. You're killing me, bro. Uh, going through, if you've got questions, raise your hand for me and I will call on you. Robert Webb. No. So, Robert, you're self muted. I'm just going to unmute every. Robert, you're back. Say words. Hello? Hello? Hello hey, Robert. Yeah. Robert, let me guess. You're in Kentucky. No. Damn it. Yes, again. <laughs> uh, it's South Texas. No. All South right. Carolina. Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, Lee, where are you at, Lee? Nice. We still come out on top. You should have known. Robert, well, first thing I always ask is, uh, first, thanks for being here. Have you seen the course? I haven't got the course, but I got the video that I bought a couple of years ago. And oh, I okay. And, uh, so you have, the, I, you have the old school DVD, my brother. That's right. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> Say, hey, send me, uh, send me an email because I want to get you into the course. It's no skin off my nose. And I want to say to everybody here, if you have the DVD, email me. I'll send you a link. 50 bucks. So for $49, you're in and you've got the course. Why do you want it? Well, you've probably lost the DVD. You've scratched the DVD. It makes for a nice wall hanger. But I want to get you into the course. There's an extra 101 hours as of today's date of additional information, stuff that is not on YouTube, stuff that, and again, not getting salesy. I, I feel icky when I do that, but good guy, now I'm offering you, Robert, that for nothing, and I'm not trying to squeeze people. It's tons and tons of work uh, to put this information out there, and it's easily accessible. You click on it, it's really fun. We've got quizzes, and I'm answering uh, the comment sections every day, three times a day. It's really fun. Robert, what's up? Uh, why, why don't you have a store yet? Well, put it this way. I was kind of reluctant in, in uh, going into it because uh, I've been watching, uh, I was working on a business. I was watching the retail business and then it went down. And I went on YouTube. I said, somebody knows something about laundromat. My grandmama ran one. And uh, I ran across like what y'all was saying about uh, People want to sell a laundromat for $200,000 and all that. And I said, no, I don't believe that. So I went on YouTube, looked it up, and I saw you then. <laughs> and then I ordered a DVD, looked at it, and I was telling my wife, I said, something about this. And I said, I'm going to watch it and learn as much as I can. I'm ready to start now. So that's what I'm at right now, ready to go. Okay. Well, well, I'm going to sign up for the course and fill it out. So, as a matter of fact, I even looked at some several stores around here in Columbia. As a matter of fact, some people kind of had to jump on me. They fixed the stores up. And uh, one store I went into, one lady took it. Keep, keep going. This is not for sale. I'm running this business. And I saw how they were doing it. They were doing real good. Good, so, uh, good. I'm still looking. And I say, well, I'm going to get one. I'm going to start off with my first one and go from there. Robert, how old are you and what do you do for money? Okay. I'm still 19 years old. No, I'm 68 years old. I'm about ready to retire from my engineering job. And uh, the type of work I do is paying very good, but it's time for me to move on to do something else. And I, say, I like the way cash flow. If they make me a millionaire, I'm not going to complain. But if I can be happy and live comfortably, that's the thing about it. Well, Robert, I see a lot of comparisons. Uh, you know, we, we, I never know what's going to happen on these webinars, and I, I love having the panel, but really it's about you. And we've got Hawa on, on here who's 25 years old, and she's got a job, and she's, you know, not proud. You could tell by the way she's oh, she working. But we all started there. Mine, it was, it was Kentucky Fried Chicken, by the way, which uh, I, I still don't know the secret recipe, but 
I wouldn't change that for the world. I wouldn't change my time in the Navy for the world as much as it was 90% horror. Then we had a war breakout, so the, finally. Um, but you're, you're able to speak eloquently on what it's like to be a 68-year-old who's worked his entire life in a good job. I Do, retired from the Navy, too. Oh, hell yeah. What was your rating? Aviation boat to make. I was up for chief boat to make, but they said, you got to go. <laughs> hell yeah, boats. I, uh, yeah. I got out EOD. I started, I was uh, Gunner's Mate Missiles, GMM. All so you, right. you could say I'm a rocket scientist. Yeah. You're, uh, you need to get after this. And it's something, I, again, I applaud you for being here. You're far, far removed from my young, from my oldest successful student. I have a webinar on YouTube where I called on a gentleman and he and his wife were both sitting next to each other. This is from December, 81 years old. He was an 81 year old hairdresser and he's got a store in Massachusetts. So they did it. You're, you're never too young or, and, and certainly never too old to get this done. If you have that passion, if you fall asleep at night, and your head hits the pillow, and you're out like a light because you've worked hard all day. There's nothing wrong with that. But right. Right. owning a business, it's more work. It's certainly more toil. But that dirt under your fingernails changes you. And in any job, even as an engineer making good money, your words, you're, you're helping someone else to make even more. Right. Thank you, Dan. Sure. Do you have a specific question you'd like answered? Well, so far, y'all answer all of my questions. Like the young lady was talking about uh, the, what do you call it, the developers, what do you call it, the people that put the machine down? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, you know, that's some inside baseball stuff. Uh, part of the reason I love Lee, the, the laundromat uh I call him the laundromat philosopher is because he speaks eloquently on these relationships and what will happen. He's not fearful. They're not the right. biggest laundromat operator out there by far. Um, and they're, you're, you're in North Carolina, Lee, so he's safe for the moment. Yeah, for now. Yeah. <laughs> how, how close is your nearest store to South Carolina? Uh, 20 miles Ooh. to the border. And let, let me say this, because this is a question I get a lot. I don't, have, I, I don't have a lot of active students, nor do I sell a lot of courses in Phoenix because they feel like, oh, Danny's done it all. Not the case. These stores, within our time in the industry, you've probably seen stores that were good, and now they're not. They're not being retooled. Um, how is, since, since your stopping, stomping grounds are the North Carolina... Would you say that they're that you've tapped out the state? Oh no, not at all. There's there's still lots of green pasture out there. There's lots of opportunity. Yeah, and that's the case everywhere. It's phenomenal. I mean, we're we're after infrastructure, and you guys are still hungry. You're still going after stores, but there's there's you know with your team, you have full time guys that retool. Yes. Yeah, we have our install crews. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's phenomenal. I wanted to help. Those are, yeah. But when I showed those are up, those who are cross trained. Yeah, they're 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 excellent members of our team. That's right. When I showed up, I wanted to help and get dirty, but let the record reflect, Your Honor, that I was brought straight to the oyster bar. Robert, I appreciate you, my friend. And I'm going to say this to everybody on these. That there's never enough time to talk to the hundreds of people that are on here, but we always get a good slice, and we always get some folks that have a lot to say. Uh, John, your microphone still isn't working. Make sure your mic is up and running. And what I'd like to do, there's a lot of hands that are raised, and one of which is Jeff. Jeff, you are, you are there. Hi, Jeff. Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Absolutely. How you doing? All right, good. Doing excellent, man. Tell us your history. You're not a ringer. You know, Danny, what are we doing together? Yep. Uh, we've been scouting stuff 
since probably uh, September, when I, right after I bought your course. Nice. So we've been getting together on a weekly basis. I watch your videos, join in, in on the uh, chats, leave a message, all the fun stuff. Jeff, you have your hand and, uh, raised and you've got the power of the panel here. So what, what did you want to know? So my biggest thing is right now that, as you know, we've been looking at a couple of places where we can never quite get a hold of the landlord. And sometimes it's, I go in there and I see the operator and I'm sometimes thinking like, is there a tactic where we could talk to the operator and say, hey, you know, you look like you're struggling. Is there a way I could help you out maybe taking over this and we rehire as a contract attendant? <laughs> and maybe help them relieve themselves of all that pressure? Let me, let me tackle this and again, go out on a limb with uh, my experience and then Tap, tap the other gentlemen that are on here that have, in many cases, more experience. The operator is in that store with blinders on. You know, let's just pick uh, male or female, white or black, uh, old or young. You've got an operator who's trying to do their level best to run a business. We all, I, I, I do these analogies, you know, the pizza shop owner where the guy's there every day, all day. They take Monday off because people don't buy pizza on Mondays. I don't know. But when, when you go in there, they're always there. And don't you, I, I always think about that guy throwing pie all day, every day. How much can he earn? What is his life like? They open at 10 a.m., they close at 1, they've got a beer tap, and it's the guy. He's there. His kids sweeping the floors. Granddad is in the back making the pizzas. I don't understand how that is a good life. And in this case, let's talk about laundromats. You've got this operator. They're really not making money. The equipment is extremely old. One of the pieces, they need to go over to the machine and hit it a certain way, like Fonzie, so it will run. There's a note on it that says, no hot water. They're in that store 10 hours a day, seven days a week. They're, if you look at their facts and figures, you might see that they're actually not even able to own a home. They don't have a Cadillac. They don't have the things that they want when they started this business, right? You follow me so far. Maybe their wife works there, and he comes in in the morning, sweeps the floors at 8 a.m., and then the wife comes in at noon. They pass like ships in the night. It's no kind of life. Is that guy going to give you the keys to his laundromat? No. No. And let me say this. As far as approaching him and saying, him or her, and saying, hey, I want to run this place, and I want to give you the wash dry fold. Well, if you look at the numbers and the wash dry fold in that business is making $6,000 a month, and the coin operated machines are making really nothing, a couple of grand. But when he pays all the bills, that 6,000 really equates to, like I said, 80 or 90 hours a week in that store. He's not gonna give you the, it's human nature. He's not gonna give you the keys to his yeah. laundromat and work there. Yeah. yeah. Make sure that you have a right understanding of what that business means to the owner. Um, it's kind of like going in and telling somebody that their child's ugly and that you'll take it and you'll pay them to babysit them. Uh, nobody's really looking up for that type of setup. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought my yeah. analogies were bad. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's got an ugly baby. Uh, I'm gonna text yeah, yeah. you. I'm gonna text you a video that I made with, with my daughter, and you're gonna crack up. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, yeah, Jeff, you want you want to get in touch with the the landlord. Um, however, you can do that. There there are ways of finding out contact information. Make a stink. Get 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 his number at a another tenant's uh, space, and uh, yeah, get his information. Uh, get her information. Yeah. Whatever it is. 
Um, yeah, and we, you do not want uh, to open dialogue at that point in time uh, with the existing store owner. And it, you know, on a personal yeah. note, it's kind of sad too. You know, you, you, you're having a discussion. I've done it. I do it a lot. I roll in and, you know, there's videos on, on YouTube from years ago. I go in there with a cameraman and a 4K light kit, and we start making... Jeff, is that you? What are you doing? Are you moving boxes? Um, you might be hearing my goat in the background. Your goat. Talking around in this little cage. Your goat in his cage. <laughs> what is his name? Um, his name is, uh, well, Leaf of, of, by my youngest child, but I call him Little Dude. Little set, set him free. <laughs> All right. Keep your, keep your mic on muted, Jeff, and I'll, I'll mute you for sake of Leaf the Goat. Uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't work. And, and I think really to get to the heart of it, you're kind of trying to get this done in a hurry. And... With my method, you shouldn't be in a hurry. And I believe in any business, you really shouldn't rush anything. I've, I've had it, dude. I, I end up, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a motivational speaker. And people that know me, people that are close to me, they watch me do both all the time. And Lee, you know this. You end up, I had a woman break down in tears, screaming at me and crying at the same time a couple of days ago. And... She's telling me I need to do this. I'm, I'm not breaking anyone's trust. You know, she's got a baby. She's homeless. And she's staying on somebody's couch. And I'm like, look, you need to be focusing on something else right now. You need to have a job. In America, you can be poor and you can still have a flat screen TV, a car, live in a nice apartment. That's just the way it is here. And I'm not going to get into this whole philosophical conversation because that's Lee's job. But at some point, I'm giving her this advice to say, look, this is something you need to get stable and you need to get your, your head together and then think about this. Do we, I've seen a lot. I haven't seen everything, but I've seen a lot. And in, in this laundromat thing, this is a phenomenal business. You're going to be paying taxes. You're going to be doing really well. The more stores you have, the better you will do. But you've got to get your head together and get everything else straight first. So Jeff, I know you're not rushing any of this, but yeah, the, seeing the operator in that store, that's one of my indications of failure. It's in the course. There's the operator. Check that off. They're in there working. I'm not saying you can't converse with them, but they'll never hand you the keys. And I'm closing a lease right now, right now in Texas. And the landlord was adamant about he, he also operates the store currently, so it's a landlord operator, and he was adamant about taking care of his attendant, who he pays under the, he gave her the keys. So she's running the store, playing with the money. Lee, you know how that works. And yeah. he, he, he's a really good guy, and he wants her taken care of. And I said, okay, and now that we're closing the lease and the lease is being signed and everything's happening, part of this is him saying, well, how much are you going to pay her? And I'm like, nothing. Uh, but what we will do is open the books and say, this is how much the wash, dry, fold has made. And we're going to give that to you. So it's really on her. But she's also not going to be paid under the table. Everything's going to be legal and above board. You can't afford to lose everything because you made one mistake. Uh, when they see those facts and figures at first, their eyes are huge, bigger than their stomach or their bank account. But when they realize now you're really an entrepreneur, now you're going to be responsible for 10 hours a day being open and operating. If you want to hire someone else under the table, that's on you. This is legal in all 50 states. Again, if you've got 40 stores or 80 stores in your family, you become a different entity. Scalability is something that I wanted to talk about. Let me take all the hands down. And everybody who has their hand raised right now on the webinar I've taken them down. Wade, you put your hand back up. Stop it. If you own a laundromat, put your hand up. So I'm looking at all the hands. I've taken them all down. If you currently have a store, if you don't mind, raise your hand. Uh, I'm waiting on that. If you have a laundromat and you're not a panel member, raise your hand for me. 
Dustin Fong. Dustin, say hello. You're self-muted. So, Dustin, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you, sir? Hey, how's it going, Danny? It's going. Where are you calling from? Uh, New York. Uh, New York City in Chinatown. Get out of here. I need you to send yeah. me some egg rolls, dude. <laughs> I, uh, now I need donuts and Chinese food. Damn it. <laughs> I have never been to China, but uh, do you know Wo Hop in the basement? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's still around. Wo Hop, bro. That's my. Where, which restaurant do you work at? <laughs> no, I don't work at your Why did I say that? Well, I'm, I'm starving. That's why. <laughs> What an idiot. That's the, that's the most racist thing I've said all day. Dustin, uh, how, how do you earn a living, not in Chinese food? Uh, so I work as like a revenue operations for like a finance data company. I'm so excited that you have this highfalutin job with all the initials after your name, because here I am thinking you're making food. Uh, not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with that. I will dig this grave even deeper as we go. Dustin, have you seen the course? Uh, yes, I have. Damn it. I keep trying to find somebody who hasn't. Uh, what's your burning question, my friend? Uh, so what if, like, once we get the lease and it's signed and then we go and approach the, all the distributors to kind of get, get them to compete against each other um, and they all hold tight at a, at a high price over your $1,000 per 10-pound um, benchmark, like, what do you do then? You're kind of stuck, I feel. Never going to happen. Like, will they do that? Never no. Never going to happen? Two of them won't even show up. And again, I'm not going on a limb here. Lee, you can feel free to interrupt. Um, mm -hmm. Lee, again, is different because they have these really good relationships with distributors. And I remember you telling me, that the, the name be damned, but they stuck some guy in a laundromat. They, they built this store and sold this guy a store between two of yours or whatever was going on, like the permits weren't in. You, yeah, you could, right by it today. <laughs> yeah, and, and they continue to do these. They, it's not a person, it's an entity. They continue to do these things that just make you lose your faith in humanity. Uh, Joe Dan Reed, who's got nine stores in Kentucky, mm -hmm. he... The, one of the distributors gave him a $200,000 check towards equipment because he wrote an essay and he's all over YouTube about it. And he's so mad right now. He's champing at the bit to do a YouTube video with me because he, the distributors put us, put a huge mega store right in his backyard. It's like you said, it's a race to the bottom, but Dustin, to answer the question, uh, what he's referring to is just like I, I told, uh, Hawa, you don't want to go to the distributors now, but once you have the lease, they know you're going to do business. Nobody goes to discount tire unless they have a flat, right? I mean, well, you got to be a nutcase to go in and say, hey, I need four new skins because they look a little raw. You get a flat. When you pull in a discount tire, you're done. You never say, well, I don't want to pay that for those tires. This is the opposite because you're bringing them in, and, and I really mean this, it's so fun to bring them all at the same time. And again, uh, what's really odd, Lee, interrupt me if I'm wrong, a, a couple of them won't show up because they're already building a couple of stores and they don't want to deal with you. Yeah. We're busy right now. You know, and, and, and yeah. selling one laundromat can make their year. Think about that. Selling two can make their decade, and don't allow it. They don't want to come and show up and sell you equipment because they already know, because the word is out that you're bringing in Hips and Speed Queen and Wascomat and ADC and Dexter, all of them. But Dustin, it's, that's kind of a deep question about purchasing equipment, and I think it stems from fear. We always end up talking about this. You're what if, I thought you were going to say, what if I lose the lease or the store doesn't make money, et cetera. And where does the question stem from? Uh, yeah, just like calculated risk, making kind of planning everything out and kind of trying to see where something could go wrong. I don't blame you. Lee, what do you think? Yeah, man, you try, trying to make them compete, um, 
can be a, a, a great idea. Um, but the, the business right now is just so backed up on uh, supply that it, you have to leverage these people against each other somehow. Um, so, Justin, you have one store already? Uh, no, I do not. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I thought you would. No, I was trying to find somebody to raise their hand that had a store, but then I, I filled in with Dustin. Gotcha. Okay. I you know, was. The, 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 you know, you're trying to leverage them against one another, um, of course, is, is a great idea. But you're going to have to go in without any fear. And the, bet, and the best way to get rid of fear is to be as knowledgeable as possible. Um, so you can go outside of your market, talk to other store owners, use forums like this um, to get as much information as you can um, and make sure they know, the salesmen know that you're not some novice who's coming in wet behind the ears um, and, and they can pull some, some tricks over on you and empower yourself with, with knowledge. Talk, Sounds good. Ask, ask, ask them about uh, turns per day. Ask them about capacity per square foot. Um, you want to make sure that they know you're serious and uh, that you're taking all of that information into account from every distributor that you're going to, that you do not want to be oversold on equipment and that you are a serious buyer and uh, you're, you're ready to get going. Well, here's one thing I did. Here's one thing I did when I had my store, right? So. Danny, Danny can can attest to all of my frustrations in dealing with distributors and how much I can't stand them. But uh, one thing that I did, I actually I actually set up a uh, distributor lunch. So I called in, I called Subway, got one of those big catered subs, uh, had one of them come in, and and I emailed all of the distributors in my area for all of the manufacturers. I sent, sent out this email, said, hey, I'm having a distributor lunch. I need equipment. I, I would like to have your guy, you guys send somebody out to, to give me a quote. So uh, I did that. I had several distributors show up. Uh, they all showed up at the same time, and they're sitting there eyeballing each other so they know that they're in competition. Um, just let you, you leverage them as long as they know they see you know, they're there, they see each other, they know that, that I'm getting multiple quotes and I'm shopping for the best one. Um, so that's one 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 thing I did that, that kind of helped to, to leverage leverage each other, leverage all the distributors against each other. And when you say the best quote, was that the the lowest quote or the most appropriately um, equipped and priced quote? Is that what you were looking for? Then? Well, I had already, I, as far as equipment go, yeah, basically it was lowest price because I had already had, I already knew what equipment I wanted and where I wanted mm -hmm. it and how many of each I wanted yeah. it. It really just came so, down to. So did you go to each one of them with, with that in mind or did you ask them to prepare just what they thought was best? Yeah, no, that's, I, I, I talked, I, I talked to each and every one of them, explained exactly what I was looking for, exactly what I wanted to do. And then, then lowest price, lowest price was going to be the winner. Gotcha. Yeah, and, and I, I know what Lee's concerned with. He's talking about how they come in and they say, well, you don't need folding tables. Let's put 50 machines over there. That's right. Yes. Not Before, before you know it, you're buying, you're buying equipment that you don't need um, that expends precious resources early on. Um, you're not going to do with that equipment the turns per day that they're telling you because you're over-equipped and you're not going to be able to meet that capacity, at least in the first 18 months or so. Yeah, it's, it's sad. And, you know, you know some of these guys personally, and you end up having a relationship with them. And I talk about that in my course, how important it is and how important it was to me. You know, you're feeling these folks out, and I've literally done it where they all show up, and, and you'll see some guy pull up in his ladder truck, and he's got... XYZ distributor written on the door and they leave. You know, they, they recognize their competition and they just say, well, this ain't for me because they're trying to make their year with the sale of that equipment. There are hard, fast rules of thumb. And again, feel free to correct me. We've got uh, re research and development is the most expensive part of, of most 
equipment processes, be it a car, you know, Mercedes comes up with all the new stuff and then 10 years later it ends up in every car. Be it, you know, they used to say overhead cam engine. I don't say that anymore, that's everything. They used to say fuel injected, like, okay, come on. What is it, an IV drip? They used to say four wheel disc brakes. You remember all that, that was part of the selling point of a new vehicle. Now, none of that, 20 inch flat screen. Research and development hasn't been done in the laundry industry in 25 years, sorry. What are they spending the money on? You've got a box with pulleys and motors and parts from China, and you have to get it cheap. But beyond that, the relationship is important. When a guy shows up and he's an aw shucks guy and he wants to do business with you, that's the guy that walks in and says, hey, Daniel, those dryers are fine. You can keep those. I'd save those and keep those until you are making tons of money and then we'll replace them. We'll talk about it later. That's your guy. But careful, because he might be a reverse sales tactic guy, right? What is that? When you go to a couch store and you ask the salesman, what do you think of this one? That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Who the hell looks like somebody threw up? Well, now you trust the guy. Now he's going to show you the $25,000 couch. This one's nice. So again, caveat emptor, you beware. Everybody wants to put their hand. These people are making a living selling equipment and selling laundromats. Lee, is there a store, I've got, I've got questions, is there a store that you've got your eye on that you've wanted for a long time that somebody else is operating? Uh, there is a location that we wanted a store where there is not one. Um, and so we're, we're trying to figure out how to, how to make that work. And we, we typically go in and acquire, definitely. Um, but we've, we've, we've bought a lot in the last uh, 24 months, the last two years. Up, you've seen up markets, you've seen down markets, and you guys just bought a strip mall. Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah, we bought a, uh, a 20,000 uh, square foot uh, strip mall with a laundromat in it. The landlord owned the laundromat and uh, made, a, made a pretty good deal on it. Nice. Well, just installed our payment system this week. So it I'm, is up and running. I am, I'm jealous. I want to be, be a strip mall owner. I don't know why. It sounds fun. What are what, how many suites? I don't know. Hey, property in Mexico. That sounds mighty nice too. Yeah, it is. And and like I say to all my friends, I'll send you a video. You can stay down there anytime you want. Yeah. Just You're kind man. Let me know. It's uh, I'm I'm good to my friends. I I uh, I I can appreciate you and what you're doing for me. It's no skin off my teeth. It's very nice. I'll give you the keys to the garage. You can take the sailboat out and kill yourself. That's probably what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if we go down together, I'll, st I'll stay in another place and we'll, we'll take some sailing lessons. I want to talk to someone who has a laundromat on this stinky webinar. Everybody's put their hands down. It doesn't look like it. So let's, let's call on somebody who, uh, who, is, who does not have the course. Let's try that. Raise your hand if you haven't seen my silly course and you're kind of on the fence. I love to talk to folks like that. David's hand shot up. David, sap. David, you are self-muted, so you have to figure out how to open your microphone. There you are. Hi, David. Danny, good to meet you, sir. How are you? How are you, my friend? You don't have the course. Is that is that right? I'm going to tell you the truth. I just ordered it off eBay for 60 bucks. Okay, that's adorable, but what you're getting there, and I don't mind that, you're getting the DVD, bro. And we still do a DVD, yes, but the course itself obviously is, is different and you'd have it instantly. It's not $60 wasted because now you're here. And I also sell the DVD on eBay, but what I do for everybody when they buy it, they get into the course, obviously. So it's funny to me, whenever I go on eBay and I look up Danny D'Angelo and I see all these people selling it, it's really kooky because on one hand, they're trying to say how great the information is because they want to sell it. But on the other hand, they're saying, well, I'm getting rid of it. You know what I mean? It's, it's an odd dichotomy when that happens. And I'm, you know, I'm not pissed. That's fine. And I appreciate your, your candor. Uh, email me when we hang up. And you're paying 50 bucks because I can upgrade you to the course. You don't have to wait for the DVD to show up. And the bigger thing is, the bigger issue is, number one, I'm going to 
have you already signed up for my newsletter? I've done the newsletter. I okay. really appreciate you doing such great content. I've been watching your videos for about two months. Thanks, dude. I'm on the newsletter. This is my second webinar. The last one I watched after the fact. Okay. Basically, I've just run into, you know, big burning in the part of Tennessee in North Georgia. There's 15 laundromats owned by one guy who is owns many of them. And then there's eight other laundromats that are privately owned, and very few of them look to be in different pair. So I'm kind of curious, you know, like we're going to jump into it dangerously fast. I haven't even seen the DVD or now the course. Thank you for taking it. Yeah, dude, you, you kicked me another 50 bucks. And look, the course costs what it costs. It's not enough. But again, we'll, we'll leave that in, in, in the past. You know, grabbing it up on, on eBay, that's great. But I... I update the DVD constantly, so I don't know how old that version is. But you're golden, so make sure you send me an email. Uh, you'll be watching the course, obviously, online instantly. That said, uh, I don't know who's making all that noise. Guys, can you self-mute? I think it's just the goat. I think just the goat is tearing up. Something. Oh, the goat, yeah. Well, I muted him. <laughs> David, you, you're, I don't think you're making the noise. Anyway. So you're, let me let me go out on a limb again. You're saying there's what what city are you in in Georgia? You muted yourself, David. Oy vey, caramba. David Sapp. I th okay. I think we lost internet for David. Um, sorry about that. I thought you were joking. That's okay, dude. No, I'm in, um, I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and North Georgia is just like five minutes over the state line. Okay. Yeah. okay. How are you finding the locations to begin with? How are you creating the list of scout locations? Before you even leave the house, before you call an Uber, how are you finding the stores? I created an Excel spreadsheet and started listing them. And uh, All right, I, I get that. But how do you know that you're going to go visit X laundromat on the corner of uh, Church Hill and 43rd Avenue? How do you know you're going to go there? I've been working it on lunch breaks and kind of after work heading home, whatever I, the wife will let me spend a little extra time okay. out. I love you, David. You're helping. killing me. How are you compiling the list? How are you starting we need to go back to the beginning. The earth cooled, the dinosaurs came. How does David find a store to go look at? Well, you mean besides just Googling for coin laundry and then looking at pictures of them and then going to check out the site, see how current the pictures there are? There you have That's it. Been my David, when you go on Google to find laundromats to scout and you type in laundromats near me, you're going to find the eight stores that are in great condition. You're going to find the other 10 stores that look to be perfect. They're retooled. There's new tile on the floors. They've got signs that say 24-7, come on in. They do barbecues on the weekend. Bro, the good stores don't even have an internet presence. You haven't seen the course, and that's why I wanted to pick on somebody that hadn't. It's in there. My first chapter is... Is laundry, are laundromats right for you? The next chapter is where and how. So, <laughs> I love this because it, it, it gives me the ability to say this. You understand, when you look for laundromats online, the gems won't even exist. There's no. a, I talk about pay phones in the laundries, and I had somebody on one of the forums there's no pay phones and laundromats anymore. That's something from the 80s. Uh, bullshit. Just saw a pay phone. I have my fingers on the pulse of thousands of laundromats through my students sending me all these stores with photographs to look at. And so when I see a pay phone, I always screen cap it and laugh about it because they're still there. And what do they do? Who, does, who needs a pay phone? Criminals, knuckleheads, druggies. They need pay phones, so get rid of them. Anyway, back to the point, you're doing it wrong. So okay. uh, when you're doing an FBI grid pattern search, and Lee can help me here, he probably has those gems that they got their fingers on and they're kind of like. Well, I, I've Ooh. already pulled up some in Dalton and Ringgold. Uh-oh. 
You're after David now. Is it now. market, David? <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, that's close <laughs> enough. Really? I can get through it. So yeah. you, you, you have to understand, and I'm not going to belabor the point, when we're scouting, that's a huge part of this. And when we're scouting, you got to kind of know. And I'll go into a kind of nasty store or even one that has a listing and they're really trying. It's like an old dating site, right, where you see the picture and the girl's kind of cute. You know, she's the right age and she's single. So are you. But you see this creepy hand. You know, why is this photograph of her the best picture she's ever taken? It's July, and yet there's a Christmas tree in the background, and there's, you know, she's cut somebody out. That's the best picture she's ever taken, and it was from the mid-'80s. When you look at these sites and these laundromats exist there on these websites, they're sweeping the floors on their way out and taking the perfect picture of the store, and that picture exists forever. My point is, when I do marketing, and this is in the course, you want to market your store by going in when there's laundry flying, there's hundreds of people everywhere. You know, new operators love to take pictures of their beautiful new store with no humans in them. But why would someone want to see that in the marketing material? They want to see people. Nothing draws a crowd like a crowd. Back to the point, there's tons of laundromats in your area that are horrible, that are ripe for takeover, but you got to scout. If you go into a decent one and you sit down for a minute, you see somebody there doing the laundry with a scowl on their face. I love to say, hey, dude, why do you come here? Well, I used to go to the one two blocks that away, but man, that place is nasty. Oh, where is it? Grab a pen. Two blocks that away. That's your okay. store. Okay. Appreciate you, David. That was nice. Make sure you email. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zap you for $50, dude, so you can get the full course. And that's a deal only for DVD buyers that want the upgrade. So I will get in your pocket, my brother. Thank you, Danny. That was very helpful. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, dude. Uh, anybody that pops on, I'm going to keep your microphone open and take his hand down. Karen Tribby. Karen raised her hand, but it shows that she's not paying attention. I can see that. Karen? Karen is self-muted. Karen, say hello. Well, I shouldn't call on somebody that says that they're not paying attention. If they open up other screens or whatever, I'm assuming that it tells me. Daniel, you would know how that works. I can send a shock through the computer, right, and get her attention. Maybe not. All right. I've muted her. Guys, raise your hand if you have a laundromat. Help me out. How while you keep on raising your hand over and over and over again, what's going on? Do you have another question? She thought of something. No? Yes? No? Karen is back looking at her computer again. Karen Tribby, hello. Karen, you are... There you are. Hi. Karen, say words. Karen Tribby, going once. Going twice. She's doing other things. Karen, shame on you for TikToking right now when you should be paying attention to the panel. <laughs> She's off and gone. Shelly D'Angelo. Shelly, what are you doing? My own wife doesn't want to respond. Hello. Hi, baby. Can you hear me? Every word. You're on okay. with the you're on with the panel. Are we having massages I later? I hope so. Yes. Absolutely. Nothing like a drunken massage with an Uber driver. Okay, good. Deal. Yeah. Lee. No masks. Dan no, no ma no mask. Uh Lee, Daniel, any questions for the wife? Shelly? As long as the drunken massage isn't coming from the Uber driver. No, <laughs> definitely not. Life is good. We've had some shady Uber drivers and been kicked out of many Uber driver, Uber cars. We've been booted out of two casinos. <laughs> only one of those All was for mine. The right yeah, only one of those. So here's Shelly, who's five foot one, total fireball, and we're in like the local Indian gaming casino that I am not a big fan of. And their bouncers are escorting us to the street. And there's these two Samoan dudes who are literally 400 pounds of sheer muscle. 
and we're in the elevator, and they're just standing there with their arms folded, looking down at my wife while she's screaming and cursing at them. And I'm just like, please, please don't have the police waiting for us outside. And they didn't. Anyway, it's a long story. But our entire group got kicked out of the uh, casino in Vegas because we're doing this again. We will have the huge roundtable summit once again in January. So there's a plug for that. Okay. Beyond the stuff, yes, we do enjoy it. Uh, Lee, do you do you play any games of chance? Uh, sure. I'm in the longer business. <laughs> do you have a drawer full of cash when the boys come over <laughs> to play cards that you just lean back and go, "All right, I'm all in." <laughs> I text a picture of that drawer to the guys in the poker club, but I never show them where it is. I love it. Cash is king, my brother. Shelly, thanks for being on here. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. She's not the only one that loves me. Uh, I'm going Now, look, I'm not going to say I'm going to wrap up because I really want to get somebody on here that owns a, a laundry. Karen has called in. Karen Tribby is really, really trying. And Karen, you've changed over from your computer to your phone. And I'm trying. I'm trying. It says you can't be unmuted until you enter a pin. So here we are when you call. Karen is trying. Karen, make sure you send me an email. Uh, Kevin Gomez. Kevin, you are self-muted. You are seconds away from getting in on the panel talk. There you are. Hi, Kevin. Hey, how's it going? Really Can well. You Every word. Where are you calling from? I'm actually on a rotation. I'm in Poland right now. Hell yeah, in bro. I've got a guy what in Poland that has, uh, I think, 11 stores now. And I was written up in Forbes, Poland, just to be selfish about it. What's, uh, what's your MOS? So I'm a 15 Romeo. I'm a Apache maintainer. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. And it's uh, almost 11 o'clock at night, or uh, I think Lee asked. Yep. Well, thank you for your cervix. <laughs> you know, we say that all the time. <laughs> we do. Only we understand that shit. Uh, bro, yeah. where where do you uh, maintain residence here in the States? So I live in Killeen, Texas. That's where Fort Hood is at. Okay. Is that where you're going to retire to? So I'm, I'm just going to finish my six-year contract, but yeah, I'm going to stay in Texas probably for the next 20 years or longer. Nice. It's funny because I deal with a lot of guys that they get out, they rotate out, and they're like, look, the Army will send you anywhere you want to go. And they end up staying in Georgia or staying in Texas. So my advice, really love where you're going to end up. You know that, And especially if you're going to do the laundry thing, they're everywhere. Just don't go to North Carolina because you're out of luck. Oh. Yeah, yeah, there's... <laughs> I can't compete with Lee over there. Kevin, what's uh, what's your background? Have you, have you seen the course? Yes, yeah, so I, I bought the course uh, a couple months ago. Um, I was actually gonna start like um, contacting you more and you know starting the whole process, but then you know I got orders to come over here, so now everything's on hold. So yeah. Back. So you're in Poland and. Folks that don't understand geography, you're uh, pretty close to the mess. Are you hearing any rumblings that that, that there's going to be an actual deployment? No, as of right now, um, Ukraine is actually hold, holding its own weight right now. Um, like is this, this is still a rotation; it hasn't even turned into a combat deployment. Right. No, I'm aware. There's no, how, uh, there's how old no are How old are you? Or, how old are I'm you, Kevin? Years old, Danny. Okay. Well, dude, I applaud you for not just thinking about the motorcycle you're going to buy when you when you rotate back to the world, um, <laughs> because th this is the type of thing you need to be focused on. Obviously, I put a lot of service members into stores and help them along the way. So good for you. Uh, use that signing bonus and or anything you, you can. I mean, three hots and a cot. All that's on. Uncle Sam. So save what you can and invest Definitely. it. Do you have a wife back home? 
Yes, I got a wife and three kids waiting for, waiting for me to get back. Good man. Well, we are praying for you, and uh, you know, I, I, I really want to get into the, the, the politics of all of it, but it's, it's a sticky widget right now. It's really, really uh, reminiscent to me of how we ended up in World War II. You know, we've got this, this uh, character, all we knew in the U.S., and, and of course, I wasn't alive then, but uh, I'm a huge fan mm -hmm. of history, and um, knowing that these brown shirt people were doing horrible things, we didn't have what we do today with phones and the internet, and thanks to Elon Musk opening the internet there in a day, you know, there's a lot of people that are on, on the side of right here, but I don't think that America wants any of our folks in harm's way. So we do appreciate you and, and what you're doing. Let's get to the laundromat stuff. What's your uh, question for the panel? So I had asked in the question section, but um, I guess my biggest thing is once uh, once a lease is signed and you start talking to distributors, I just want a more in-depth answer of like, what's uh, the waiting time to get the new machines? And we yeah, haven't like what we have an expert long, on that. How long? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like I know it was answered in the questions comment. Yeah, Dan section, Daniel's but. Daniel's taking really good care of me. He's teching and and answering a lot of those, but. We want to get a little deeper. Let me say something before we bring Lee in on this one. Um, if you can pick and choose which store you take over in so many ways. Uh, you, this isn't a franchise where your McDonald's says, here's where we need a store. You have a million dollars. You're 54 years old and ready to, to go to hamburger college. It ain't that. So you're picking the store, understand. When you're looking all over Texas, you're saying, oh, does it make sense to me? Again, second chapter in the course, how far is too far? Some people in Connecticut drive two hours to a job in the city or uh, take two trains and a bus. To them, that makes sense. They're spending 60 hours a week traveling, a train, a bus, a cab. Um, I prefer helicopter, but that's another story for another day. So you get to pick and choose. And what I mean is, if you grab a store that is operating like Daniel did, but it's closed down because the $20,000 boiler is missing, make a deal with the landlord. Am I throwing dice here and saying this is a gamble and there's, Danny, that store doesn't exist. It does, trust me. I go out on a limb with our other friend, David, and he says, well, I, all the stores here are great. Now, there's plenty of shitty stores. You're just not looking correctly. They don't advertise. So with you, how long does it take to retool? Well, I'm not ask I'm asking 18 months. We're getting 12. You're not going to find a landlord that's going to give you more than 12 months abatement. I've had 18, and we're using the retool time as a hook, OK? It has to make sense to them. I just did one in Texas. My, my mind is blurry when it comes to this stuff, but the landlord said, hey, let's do it this way. When you retool, we'll give you, that's when you start paying rent. And I said, allow me to interrupt. We're not really looking for abatement period, free rent. So some of the people don't have the course, they've never heard of that. We're, they've never, they're never gonna give you as much time as you need. This guy said, well, as soon as you open the doors, however long it takes, start paying rent. And I said, well, we actually need time to bring the consumers back. Lee knows, Daniel knows, the consumer's very slow in coming back to these stores. So he gave us 60 days post equipment renewal. So you've got two months to scramble. But dude, the feeling that you have, I know what it's like to be deployed. I know what it's like to miss your family and yeah. spend Christmas. I was always getting in trouble, dude. I couldn't get ranked. You know, not in my Navy. I told some master chief, get a Navy and let me know. Pfft. That was a rough Christmas day. So, your, your equipment is going to take as long as it takes. There's nothing we can do. You're not going to get to the head of the line. However, the store you take over is your choice. If it already operates, like Daniel said, these, these folks don't even fix the equipment. They go over and bang the machine to make it work. You won't do that. Fix it. Get it running. 
limp it along and have those signage out there that say under better management. I love changing that word. Lee, you're an expert. How long is it taking to get equipment right now? <laughs> oh, 12 months is what we've been told on our last order. Okay. And it's going to be 12 months. Okay. Lee is sending me a text. He says he's got to run. You, you, can, you can say that. It's okay. I love you, man. I appreciate your being on here. I love you too, man. Vegas is going to be... Fantastic. Vegas is going to be a friggin' hoot. It is, man. I love Vegas. Vegas is an awesome city. One day is perfect. Two days is a bit much. Anything <laughs> three days or more, you're... Yeah, you got to get out of there. It's going it to be a... Trouble. It's going to be a real blast. It's going to be 90%. So it's, it's obviously the Williford brothers, Daniel Allbrand. I'm bringing out all the stops because I want the fun folks. We've got Brandon Schlichter, Investment Joy. All these guys are going to get an hour to kibitz with the crowd to talk to us. We're going to have a cocktail hour on the roof of the Circa Hotel. We're doing downtown because we're going old school. The Bellagio, eh. We're going old school. Uh, I'm leaving people out. We've got the, uh, the couple from Chock Full of Quarters. We've got Daniel, your friend, finding Ke uh, following Keenan. And Chris from the Car Wash Chronicles. He's a really cool former MMA fighter. He doesn't, I haven't met him. We haven't even talked on the phone because I'm flying out to LA to speak with him and to force our friend Joe into a talk. He's got three. We're working on four laundromats right now. Lee, I'll let you go, dude. I appreciate you so much. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thanks for all you do. It's been, been great to join you. Yeah, really fun. fun. I'll, I'll start lining up your guests because obviously when we're in Vegas, you guys are going to sneak off to the hotel suite and uh, put some people on your show. That's going to be really fun. Oh, yes. You're at the top of the list, so. Oh, one. no. I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. And I t tell Chris I said hi, and uh, God bless. All right. Take care, Dan. Thanks, dude. Uh, Lee is gone. I'm going to miss him. We have no time limit here. I'm going to try back to Karen again. Hi, Karen. You're self-muted. I see that you've raised your hand. Hi, Karen. There she is. Say words, Karen. We're all hoping and dreaming of a good conversation. Karen, you're unmuted and everything looks like it's working. It's five by five. Speak into the microphone. It's always somebody that I really try. Nope, now she's gone and now she's on the phone. Karen is madly just doing things and none of it is working. John Zinke. John, did you fix yourself muted? There he is. John, say hello. Is it working now? It's working now. Oh, thank gosh. I couldn't figure that out. <laughs> John, where are you calling from? Minneapolis. Lovely. My last name is Jinky, by the way. Nobody ever pronounces that right. Say it again. And I'm Navy, too, so it's an all-Navy group tonight. There we go. How do you say the last name? Kiki. Like Kiki. Jiki, like, like G for G. Okay, okay. I will get that right, Jiki. So, nobody ever does, so, John, you are all over my YouTube, and I appreciate you for that. You're just one of those names that I always see. I got to start making you a presenter on there if I knew how to do that. And it's it's good to talk to you. Yeah. What's what's the burning question for me, Daniel, the group? Oh my God, Brandon Schlichter's on here too now. Brandon, you're. Okay, I'll, I'll make it quick so you can. Yeah, no problem. Things. No, it's just that. I appreciate your YouTube. I've, I kind of got to put everything on hold because I've got some huge medical issues coming up. And I just really appreciate what you do because I, when I scout laundries, it's like even ones that aren't available, I find nobody is doing them correctly. It's like hilarious. I mean, there's one I go to. It's busy. It's making money. But the... Um, the front window was covered with posters 
so you can't see in. They've got the back lights all off. It's got prices for folding clothes, but the people are never in there for doing it. Yeah, you can't, you can't blame them. I mean, why would anybody want to go in there and do laundry? The folks that are in there are, are essentially being forced to do so. You know, it's not a prison. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, and, and you've seen yeah. the course, and so you know when you walk in there. For one thing, if, if you haven't seen the course and you haven't ingested information, you walk into a laundromat, tons of folks are still scouting. You know, we talked to uh, David, who, who, who got the DVD through eBay, and... He's walking into a store, kind of not knowing, but your first thing is this feeling of dread. What is going on here? What, what is happening? Why do I feel like I'm gonna be knifed in the back? And all I'm doing is giving you the indication so you start to say, oh look, I can't see out, which means people can't see in, which means the knuckleheads are gonna come in there and do the knifing. You know, it's, it's not safe. Or they've got uh, advertising materials all over the front glass. Brandon Schlichter, Brandon, you have your, you are self-muted. I've unmuted you, Brandon. He's doing 15 things at once. Yo, bro. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, cool. For those yeah. of you that don't know, so give me the elevator conversation. Who are you? Start with a million, 200,000 YouTube followers. You, uh, I'm jealous. How did that work out? And so far, so good. Uh, things are going well. My name is Brandon Schlichter. I'm, I go by Investment Joy on social media. Um, if you watched a YouTube video with like laundromats on there, I, I'm probably one of them. Um, so I've been a real estate investor for years. Grew up very, very poor. Um, my dad was a truck driver. Got into buying businesses and investing in real estate and doing stuff like that because I didn't want to be chronically poor. And um, I've got uh, two, technically right now, two laundromats. We're in the process of liquidating the one just because it's crap. Um, and then Danny's come on board to help me. We've improved cash flow. I think on this one, probably well, actual cash flow is like four or five times after retooling. Um, kind of looking at a second retool. Um, but uh, Danny wants to give me some of his um, wisdom before that transpires in the near future. But uh, we're doing, we've improved both gross sales as well as cash flow quite a bit due to the retool and we've got some more work to go, but uh, making decent progress. I, I have to take the time to beat you up because you, you know me well enough that I don't say anything behind your back I wouldn't say to your face. It's, that's my claim to fame. Oh, I know. And I, I consider you a friend. Uh, you had a YouTube video that just exploded. What was the title of that first one? We bought a laundromat. Yeah, I bought a laundromat. Here's how much money it makes. There you go. So it went viral in the millions almost overnight, skyrocketing his fame. And the funny thing was he emails me right away and he's like, hey, I'm getting all these people that want to know how to do laundromats and I, I kind of want to know if you do affiliate marketing, which makes perfect sense. You know, when you have that kind of fame, farm stuff out. And my first thing was, no, never done it, won't do it, you don't fit into the category. But then I sent the DVD, which was all I had at the time. So short story shorter, uh, Brandon did reach out and that's not you that's feeding back. If everybody wouldn't mind muting other than Brandon, I'd appreciate it a lot. Uh, I sent you the DVD and you're kind of like, well, okay, whatever. And then we became friends because we talked about firearms and we talked about life and we were texting back and forth quite a bit. Then suddenly I get this text, hey, I watched the DVD. Holy crap, this has a lot to do with actually running a store, not just getting them for free. I was like, yeah, dude, I told you. So that's my history of it. And I, what I really would like for you, what I really want for you is to have that store that we scouted that we got booted out of. Do you know what the scenario is? Cause that, that store to me just seems like it's, it's the right size, it's the right part of town and that place, dude, that could be a cash cow for you. Yeah, um, it's just, I, I haven't followed up on it. Uh, my workloads continue to be higher, but we've got, whenever you come to town, you'll see that my, I've got a team that's actually working in the background now, as opposed to me doing 90% of stuff myself, which has been the problem. So the, the intention or the goal here is that I can get some of my interns and people helping me out to go and deal with locations that I'd like to scout in the near future. Cause it's like, 
I know after talking to some of the people that have gone through your system, um, especially like the Wilfords, you know, my laundromat that I have that fe is featured in the YouTube videos is a very solid underperformer compared to what they're doing. So if I could have a couple laundromats that are doing $10,000 a month, you know, in that range, I could, I could use them. They would be nice. So, you know, it's in my best interest to, to figure out what I have now, expand, get more, just due to efficiency of scale. So. Yeah, it's, it's easy for me to have this 10,000 foot view looking down and say, dude, this, and when I visited again, I said, you know, this one's a dog. It's, you know, little things that seem small where someone built a laundromat and there was no concrete base. So it, it's very difficult to run a successful store when you're on wooden beams. It's just, it, it doesn't make sense. Could it be fixed and rectified? Sure. $7,500,000 in steel beams uh, probably doesn't make sense. But looking at all of it, I think it hinges on either, either buying that building where that store exists, because here's my thing. You are so transparent, and God bless you. I love that about you. Everyone does. And you talk about what you earn, how much you make, down to the penny. You know, you're pulling nickels out of your uh, soda and snack machines, and it makes for great content. It's phenomenal. And you're getting kids involved, kids involved in investing, and I applaud you for it. Um, but what, what, what I'm screaming at my YouTube screen about is like, dude, that store is so small, the one that you operate. Uh, it's great, but I would go after that other one. And I'm not going to repeat myself or beat a dead horse, but... Um, we made a couple calls and we even tried to get the guy on the phone. The guy never returned the calls. Yeah. And I think he, he it, it's just, a, it, it, it's always like this where you're putting the finger on the store that you want, but you're not in love with it. Because that place, yeah. you mentioned 10,000. Bro, Lee's gone now, but a, a laundromat, I'm on the phone with a guy in Connecticut and he told me, well, my family took over a store. They've got two or three laundries. It, it escapes me how many. And he says, I, I, put everything you do in place, Danny. So we went from $35,000 gross monthly to $55,000 gross yeah. monthly. Now, you know from my rule of thumb, one quarter of that, if you're paying rent, is yours. So do the math. Uh, stores yeah. should, without breaking a sweat, the real number, $10,000 a month in a decent 2,000 square foot laundromat, without breaking a sweat. And yeah. there, there are smaller nuances to it. Do you do contract attendance? Do you try to make money in wash, dry, fold? You don't have the time for that, nor the inclination. And so there's methods to get people in there. It's just sticking with it, hunkering down and pushing. Dude, there's not enough hours in the day for guys like you and I where, when was the last time other than church on Sunday that you had some me time. It's not often. You got to fix that. Well, and he, 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 I don't disagree. Here I am turning into that counselor, but I am fiercely loyal to my friends and I consider you a friend. Uh, when I break bread with someone, it's, it's, it's different. And I'm really looking forward to coming out. I'm going to get there before we do Vegas and yeah. Vegas is going to be kooky. I'm putting it... I'm gonna reveal it right now. We're gonna do a game show. So uh, probably Saturday night, we're gonna have a panel and I'm gonna be the host of Family Feud. So awesome. uh, I, I think you will probably be the dad of one of the groups. And uh, yeah, Luke and or Lee will be. <laughs> I, I know, the, the comedy writes itself. It's gonna be 90% uh, Brady's Bunch and 10% Laundromat. So I've revealed it. That's one of the things that I have in the works. Awesome. And dealing with the Circa Hotel is phenomenal. And uh, oh, good. yeah, it, it's going to be off the chain. Uh, hang, hang out for a minute. We're going we're gonna to end this. Is there anything you wanted to say, Brandon? No, I'm just really looking forward to it. We need, we need to figure out how many camera people are going to be there because I expect lots of interesting things to transpire. Even if only the invited guests show up, it's going to be a hoot. It's the fun stuff. Everybody says they're going to go to Vegas and it's going to be wild and what happens there stays there. But when you get kicked out of a casino, it tends to resonate, you know. And last time we had a chopper pilot with us and it was like, 
bro, having you with two bottles of champagne and the knowledge in your head, you never know. You might end up, I'm like, do, do helicopters even have keys? He's like, nope, we can steal one of them. Okay, the night will be fun. Uh, we have tons of people on here and lots of folks with their hand raised. And John, I wanted to go back to you because I didn't mean to cut you short. Uh, John, what is the burning question for the panel? Um, Jess, I'm trying to improve my scouting technique. And I, I realized I can hire somebody just to go through Google Maps and, and just look for laundry mats and I can just go then physically scout scout them all. And I don't know if anybody else has done that. But um, if people are still looking for a better way of to, to scout maps. But I'm doing that because I live in Minneapolis, but I'm moving out of Minneapolis when I have my surgery. Okay. I don't want to live in Minneapolis. It's too cold. Well, we talked about that uh, with Dustin, uh, I'm sorry, with Kevin. And the thing is, make sure you know that you're scouting where you want to be. And that's personal yeah. advice because, I mean, it's great fun to look at stores. And frankly, uh, I end up calling, accidentally calling operators where my student, my client puts the wrong number. They think it's the landlord, but it turns out to be the operator. And they end up screaming at me and telling me off. And it's mental masturbation. It doesn't go anywhere, but it makes for an entertaining YouTube video. So if you're looking at stores in Minneapolis and don't plan on ending up there, I would say get to where you need to be. I put Jeff in a store in the Carolinas, and he's originally from New Jersey. He's right now on Facebook on a, another trip getting ready to finalize his lease and having just an incredible time. He's doing pictures of man, I can't believe this Southern food. And the next day it's, why does Walmart say you can't carry concealed in here? You know, it's like crazy where he, he says he got called a Yankee, you know, but, but that's where he wants to reside. He doesn't want to live in New Jersey any longer. So it's, it's really heartwarming to know that in some tiny way, I've helped someone realize that dream and get out of New Jersey. You know, the East Coast is a nice place to visit, as they say. Uh, if I, I'm going to take all the hands down and the only thing we're missing is folks that have a store, but that's a okay. Thank you, Daniel, for being here. Anytime, anytime. Hey, uh, I do, I do have a, I've, I've got a question. I've got a couple, couple of questions for Brandon, if you don't mind, Danny. Of course. If, if he's still on here. Yeah, he's here. Um, obviously after retooling, I didn't get to that point with my store. So I'm kind of curious if after retooling, when you go in and you get the equipment, obviously you have, there's a monthly payment associated with that. Have you noticed the, uh, increase in your net, um, in, in the profit side of it with, with the new equipment? Yeah, like I said earlier, um, our, my actual cash flow, money in my pocket, has probably tripled since the retool. My gross revenue has probably increased four times. Um, and, and the thing is, I just I just grabbed money today. We just shot a YouTube video on it. And I'm right now pulling in, oh gosh, I, I, I think last month, I, we probably have to do this on a YouTube video. I think I brought in more last month each week than I did last year with the old equipment per month. Nice. So that's but that just for March it was four times higher, four hundred percent. The in cash flow, my um, and I'm pretty I try to be transparent. My um, equipment payment sixteen fifty. I got screwed by the distributor just like Danny warns everybody about. I probably paid double for my machine. I'm so phone. pissed off that you didn't just pick up the phone and call me, dude. I know. He did a video and he's like, well, this machine costs $8,000 and I'm, I'm literally, oh my God, oh my God, it's a $4,000 machine, but okay, yeah. we get it, yeah. we get I it. I did it wrong and if I am, I am the warning lesson on YouTube that Danny can keep referring to. Let's go watch video number 35 of Brandon getting excited over an $8,000 Dexter washer he should have paid five grand for. 
the, the thousands the, 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 the good thing is, it's still you're it's still you're still coming out on top a lot more than what you were even with without that payment. You're still making more money. So yes, yes. But if we want to be honest, I I can pay my bills through YouTube videos and. The average, average laundromat, laundromat operator that, that wants to have a laundromat, laundromat can't do that. So the wisest choice there is to listen, listen to Danny and do what he says. <laughs> Don't let them rip you off. But even with my sixteen fifty a month payment, which really should be about twelve hundred bucks after it's all said and done, if I if I were listen to Danny's, it should have been thousand twelve hundred bucks. We're still cash flowing off this place in my pocket every month a lot more than I was prior. So. Um, it encourages me to go out and scout more locations to do uh, to get more equipment to do a better job on what I have now, as well as hopefully light a fire under my butt so I can buy all the other locations in my region, as opposed to just not getting them and letting one of Danny's um, people get them out from under me. If that makes sense. Sure. And are you are you twenty four hours or no? Not yet. We're going to that. Probably June or July. That's, that's like, like that's, that's one of the next, next implementations that I've got to get. We're we're, we're right, right now. I don't, I don't talk about on YouTube. YouTube. We we're we're, we're open, open until like one o'clock at nights now, because, because I, I have, have people bringing in band loads of clothes, clothes at ten o'clock, and, and I have my girl that lives upstairs. I just tell her just just go check it when they leave, and she's got cameras. She she just goes downstairs and she flips the lock, but. It would be really, really nice, nice to not, not have to do that because I pay her like ten dollars to do that at night if she has to. Um, it would be very nice to wait and just have you know a, a lock or something that keeps it open. Um, that's the next implementation. I have two questions. Any consideration into using the uh, Alexa ring system? I mean, I've looked at I think everything under the sun, and it's just. It, if I do uh, Alexa and a ring system, or I use Wise cameras and they've got a comparable system, I need to have somebody. I would have to have somebody other than her manage them. So I thought about getting like a VA from the Philippines or someone that just watches the cameras for a dollar an hour at night and just run off yelling people because yelling people works really really well if on their intercom system. It does. I can tell you that. <laughs> I'll tell you this much: if uh, if you do decide to go the Alexa route. Obviously, I've been there and done that. Feel free to shoot me a message anytime, and I can help get that set up for you as far as the messaging and stuff like that. We we're gonna have the meeting of the minds in Vegas, so you guys are gonna you're you're definitely gonna be on separate teams when we do the uh, the family feud. Brandon, I have how does your store look on Sunday? I assume it's just packed. I uh, I don't know I don't remember looking at the cameras the past two weeks. But we're, we're now, now running, running into the problem that you warned me about. Every single dryer is in use, and we're having a line, which I know is going to hurt my residual customers from coming back. Yeah. Because one of my competitors got some really bad staff in, and they're just running the customers off. So they're coming to my laundromat. They love it. They, I've got better equipment. It's cleaner. It's nicer than the other facilities in town. But I know that that's not going to stick around forever. It's if just so they small. Have to wait an hour to dump their washers into the dryers. So that's yeah. something that I'm tackling, kind of tackling now. Um, yesterday, they're putting a brand new roof on the laundromat. That was like the big thing that I've got to deal with before we start on the next phase. Yeah. Dude, you, it's an absolute positive no-brainer to get another larger store in that town, and you know it. Uh, but I, you know, I'm coming out. I'm going to beat you up on that. I'm having your wife's meatloaf no matter what. And... I, I do certainly look forward to it. Now, what, what, what about knocking that wall down and taking that office space and putting, again, pushing that wall back and making that part of the store? That would be good. I'm not opposed to that, but there's another wall that we didn't get into there, and I've already had my guys look at it. It's, um, it's all concrete underneath there, um, and it's just going to come down to price because... A lot, a lot of people, people don't realize it, and I, you're kind of one of them too, that I can double, actually, the, the current footprint's a 1,000 square feet, which I know is too small. Yeah. If I blew out the wall where my office is, which I'm not opposed to, and then blow out the wall behind the dryers, because there's another wall that you... you we yeah, yeah, I remember. We there. Yeah. Well, You showed you me all that. You, you didn't see behind the green wall, though. There's another 1,000 square feet back there. Mm. It's, it's the garage area. Dude. 
I don't it, know. You know damn well more machines, more money. But yes, I, I knew what you would do, and you're different. You're very, very unique in that here you are on Graham Stephan as the laundromat kingpin. Doesn't upset me. It's like you are, you are the number one laundromat influencer on the planet Earth right now. And you and I both laugh about it. And the ironic thing is, like, you've got 1,000 square foot laundry. And if there's a guy in New Jersey with a 1,000 square foot laundry, he's wondering how quickly he can kill himself. And then there's you, where you've retooled the store, you're in the heyday, and you've realized more equipment. But I, but I know you, and it's, you're like me in many ways with the ADD and the, I got a million things to do. That's why I appreciate everybody that comes on board on these things. Your time is so extremely valuable. So thank you, Brandon. And thank you, Daniel. And thanks, Lee, very much for being on board. Vegas is going to be absolutely insane. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's on here. And I want to really implore you to change something, whether it's the way you treat your dog or how you perform at work, understanding that you're not going to be there for very long because job stands for just over broke. I don't care if you're digging ditches and taking the bus to that job every day or if you're a neurosurgeon taking your Corvette and parking in the basement. I've worked with both. You need to get out of that phase in your life and start owning the business. Joe in Los Angeles is out here doing four laundromats and saying, I, I, I go to work every day. My head is spinning. I'm thinking, why am I doing this? Maybe it makes sense to stay at the job for the benefits and phone it in. I don't have a plan B for you if you're on here. And life is pretty good. Make it better. Your time with family, that's why people see this. I want a turnkey absentee business. There's no such thing. But laundries are about as close as you're going to get. There's a lot of nuances to doing it right. I help with that. The million questions that you have, the big ones, is it right for me? We talked about it. How do I scout it? Forget about all that. Should you own a coin laundromat? Absolutely. There are tons of these stores in decrepit condition all over the world. I'm the old man in the sea all of a sudden. I always wanted to have gray hair so I could be an expert. Well, here I am. I'm an expert in nothing. This all comes down to human nature. My channel has become me talking to landlords, good, bad, or indifferent, closing a lease just about every single day. I handle the work that you don't want to do. My vocation, not job, has become a lease negotiator. I implore you, change something. If you need to, change everything. I can feel for folks that are deployed to Poland with their minds spinning, not thinking about getting home and getting a J-O-B, but thinking about owning the business. I don't have plan B. You're really good auto mechanics. Should you start a mechanic shop? I really don't know. I know that when I got into laundromats, I saw that light at the end of the tunnel. I want to have a business where I can scale and I don't have to be there. Every time I'm water skiing or I'm in Mexico, my contract attendants think I'm at another store. That's the way it has to be. Can you work in your laundromat and own 10 of them? No, that doesn't make sense. It's an oxymoron. You will work on your stores, plural. Substantial wealth in laundromats is obtainable. It's simple. It's not easy. It's simple. You're on here and I appreciate you. I do one of these every couple of months. It's hit or miss. I have a newsletter. Sign up for it. It's not going to cost you a penny. If you've been watching this thing for a couple hours, 
Thank you. I know how valuable your time is. Everyone here, send me an email. This webinar will send out automatic emails, and you're going to get a deal on the course. So wait for that email. It fires off an hour after we hang up. If you're an old DVD guy or gal, hit me up and I'll give you the same deal so you can get in the course. But most importantly, email me direct every day, not just webinar day. Send me an email. I'm here to help. Thank you very much. Appreciate all of you. Vegas, Danny D out.